Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Double in. That mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Have you ever wanted to go out and catch king mackerel, also known as kingfish, but you just didn't know how to get started or even know what to do? Well, in this episode, I'm going to simplify this process. We're going to go over how to fish for them, where to find them, and what bait and gear to use to catch them. That's right, we're going to go over the easiest way to catch kingfish. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay, so like I said, the easiest way to catch kingfish. Hands down, without a doubt, the easiest way to catch kingfish is by planer trolling. That means you're going to be pulling lines behind the boat using one of these. What planer trolling does is it gets your bait down into the water column where kingfish are usually hanging out. Now, I mean, kingfish are up on top sometimes, but more often than not, if you're trolling a planer right over the reef's edge, you get to hook up with the kingfish that you are looking for. Now, in a little bit, I will go over exactly how to set up planer trolling rig and get you underway so that you can dunk your line in the water, pull that bait, and get the hook up. It's a little bit of a setup process to do, but trust me when I say it's not that complicated. The next thing we need to understand is how to find king mackerel. King mackerel are a migratory fish. They are found in every ocean all over the world. But the group that I'm gonna concentrate on for this episode is the one found in the Atlantic Ocean. They follow a migration pattern that is similar to every migrating fish in the Atlantic Ocean. What this is, is they will travel up the east coast of Florida up to about New England. Then they will head out east towards the deep end of the Sargasso Sea and they'll circle back around towards the Caribbean Sea. When they get back towards the Caribbean, they start heading back towards Florida, they will split. Some will go into the Gulf of Mexico and others will keep traveling up the east coast of the United States. Seeing that they're migratory species, you gotta understand that they have spawning periods too. What this means is, is they're feeding heavily during certain periods of the year and they're pretty much non-existent during other periods of the year. So here in South Florida, kingfish have two times of years where they put on the hottest bite. The first time is springtime from March through May. That's when you're gonna wanna go for kingfish. They're around, they're feeding, they're getting ready to go spawn. Then they'll return again in the fall from late August all the way through to the end of November almost. You can fish for them. Now don't get me wrong, kingfish are around all year round, but they're thicker at other times where you get what's called a hot bite, where it's way easier to get that hookup. Now you might ask, where do I find these creatures? So in general terms, king mackerel are a reef combing fish. They're predators that feed on the smaller bait fish of the reef. The best depths that I utilize to catch kingfish are between 90 and 120 feet. Now, that's just a general depth. If you're hunting them down, you're definitely gonna wanna look for structure on the seabed. You're gonna wanna troll around wrecks, shallow to deep wrecks in between those zones. You're gonna wanna fish ledges and reefs with structure. Remember, the small bait fish find the homes around structure. It's safety for them. And the predators eat the small fish. So, hence, they are hanging around the structure, always hunting. So to be able to find structure, you're gonna to have to be able to utilize some instruments on your boat. You're gonna use that fish finder to recognize structure on the bottom, finding your wrecks, finding your relief structure. You can also use your GPS to identify ledges and where the bottom of the seabed floor has more of a steep incline or it is less of an incline by examining the contour lines on it. When looking at your GPS, it's as simple as this. Your contour lines are spread further apart. That means the seabed floor is less of an incline. If they are packed closer together, that means it's a steeper 
incline. That's how you identify ledges and you find places to troll over or fish the bottom for when trying to find fish. Okay, so now we've gone over how we're gonna fish for them. We're gonna do some planer trolling. We know when and where to find and look for them. The spring months and the fall months. And we're gonna look over structure and the deep edges of the reefs, mainly for hunting them. And now the next area to cover is what do I troll with them for? What baits do I use? Very important. When you're playing your trolling, you're gonna to wanna to use a wire leader. You're going for toothy critters. If you're not using wire leader, be sure to use long shank hooks. Any nick by these razor sharp teeth from these toothy critters on a mono leader, your whole setup will be gone. The first most popular trolling lure to go for kingfish with is a drone spoon. You hook this up to your leader on your planer and you troll this at about six to eight knots. Personally, I find the silver one or the green one to work best. The drone spoon is ultra effective when it comes to getting kingfish. And the most popular types of lures to troll for kingfish are strip bait lures, just like these. What it is, is it's a combination of an item called a sea witch and some sort of trolling skirt or trolling squid, followed by some hooks, like a double hook 80 tandem setup. Now there are a couple different types of sea witches that you can use. You can use fabric ones. This is a blue and white fabric sea witch, which works great. Or the more popular types are the mylar ones. They have a reflective quality to them because of the little tinsel strands on them that seem almost iridescent. There's all sorts of customizations you can do. This is one that I've assembled. It has a green sort of reflective mylar sea witch on it. And it's followed by a simple trolling squid, four inch trolling squid that's dolphin colored. It's hooked up with 5-0 tandem J hooks. I got pink mylar sea witch with a pink and yellow trolling squid. So what you'll see when I'm making my strip bait lures that I keep the, the colors topical. You see, I've got the green with the green and the blue and the pink with the pink and the white. They kind of look similar. You can go crazy and you could do opposite colors, mix yellows with blues and stuff like that and try what works for you. In my experience, it's best to keep colors topical. Like this one here where I've got a pink trolling skirt and a sort of pink reflective Mylar Sea Witch on it. Very topical in colors. And then there's this one, which is topical in colors too. We've got a blue and white fabric sea witch over a dolphin colored trolling skirt, chartreuse blue and white, and it's hooked up with tandem 80 J hooks. So what I wanna do is I wanna take you and show you exactly how to make this exact lure, a replica of it. And you can use this process on your own to make any strip bait lure that you want to. To do this properly, you're gonna need these items. About 16 to 18 inches of number four, 40 pound wire leader. Uh, it's from the company Malin. Uh, it doesn't matter, you can use whatever company you want to. I go with a lighter wire, it's more stealthy. Next thing, uh, you'll need a cutting tool. If you've got a haywire twist tool and you like to use it, which I do, two 80 hooks, one ounce sinker, plastic skirt, trolling skirt, six inch blue and white mylar sea witch. First thing you need to do is we need to make a double hook tandem setup. Hold your hook backwards right where your hook turns around and meets the shank of the hook. You take your any cutting tool and you pinch right in there, right in between the eye and you open it up. Then you take your next hook and you Oop, good to go. Then you'll take the back side of your cutting tool and you're just gonna put that eye right in there and pinch it closed. And then you're good to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie our wire leader to our hook. So I'm going to put my tag end through my hook. I'm going to slip it through and use the haywire twist tool so I'm just gonna take it and twist it around, give it about eight twists, and I'll pull it back, good to go. I've got some really good twists in there. Now I'll take my tag end, 
I'm going to bend it at 90 degrees. And you want to make about, you know, six to eight barrel wraps. Try to get them as tightly wound as you can. Then you're going to snap off your tag end by bending it back and forth. Good to go. Now I'm going to put on one ounce egg sinker through the free end. Put that down in there. So this is what we got. Then I'm going to slip on the skirt. Next, we're going to put on our sea witch. Remember, when you put on a sea witch, you don't want to put it on like this so that it's trolling like this. You want it to troll so that it goes backwards and it creates a flare and some smoke in the water and it will do this sort of action as it is trolling through the water. So you take your wire and you're going to feed it down into the little weighted head of the sea witch. And you're good to go. Again, we'll use the haywire twist tool. Then create your loop. Break it off. All right. That's your lure. Okay, so that is how you make this exact lure in detail. So when we're talking about a strip bait lure, it's called that for a reason. You're gonna wanna make this lure, but you're also gonna wanna tip it on your double hook setup with some sort of strip bait. My favorite strip bait is Bonita strips. So when it comes to Bonita strips, there's two ways to go about it. You can go to your favorite tackle shop and see if they sell them, or you can learn to catch Bonita and make strips by yourself. The simplest way I can explain to make a strip bait is fillet your catch. Shade down the bulk of your meat till your fillet is about a quarter of an inch thick. Then you're gonna to wanna to slice elongated teardrop shaped strips from the back to the front. When you make a strip bait, the back of the fish is always the front of your lure. So now we've gone over the process of how to make the lures. The next thing to explain is that you're going to need a leader in between your planer and your lure. The typical leader that you wanna use for planer trolling is a minimum of 75 feet. The planer is a big hunk of hardware. You don't want to keep your bait right next to it. You want a long leader. This is a detractant. So if your bait is too close to your planer, you are decreasing your hookup ratio greatly. My typical leader is 100 feet long. What I have here is 60 pound monofilament leader. So when it comes to planers and planer size, this is my favorite planer. It's a number six planer. The size is not based on the size of the plate. It is the weight. You can get smaller ones. They will travel higher up in the water column. The larger ones will dive deeper. All right, so also included in the what do I fish for kingfish with on top of the lures and the leaders and the planer is the gear. And I'm going to go over exactly what gear I use right now to do planer trolling with. This is my planer trolling setup. This is a Penn International 30. It's spooled with 80 pound braid. My suggestion is that you use braid when trolling a planer. Braid does not give. It makes your planer dive down into the water column and stay steady. This rod is a seven foot custom chaos rod. It's got all roller guides on it. You want those roller guides and you want them to be functioning. You'll want to periodically check these roller guides and make sure that they're functioning that way when you get a hit and line starts peeling out that they're rolling and your line is not just slipping over it. So what this is considered is this is considered medium sized conventional trolling reel. All right, so now that we've gone over all this stuff about how to catch the kingfish, I wanna put it in motion for you. I'm gonna take you out on the water. I'm gonna show you how to set the planer in, release your leader, get your rod set. You want to make sure your planer is set and there's a technique to it. We're going to go over that right now. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to take 
the swivel that is attached to our main line and we are going to hook it up to our ring that is on our planer. Always hook your main line onto the ring of the swivel so that it trolls properly. The next thing we will do is we will take the 300 pound swivel that is on our leader. We will hook it onto the solid ring that is on the plate of the planer. Flip that on. And the final step is to take our size number seven swivel. And we'll hook it on to the loop end of our wire leader. So again, like I said, as we were assembling the lure, this is my main line. It will be trolling my lure. My rod is back this way. You have your line hooked on to your ring of your planer. The weight makes it dive down. My lure is back out here. We're trolling along, pulling our lure this way. As soon as the fish hits, it straightens out the planer like that and it makes it rise to the surface. If you're asking me what the best speeds to do planer trolling at, it's between six and eight knots. You might think this is a little fast, it is not. Kingfish swim well over 30 knots when attacking prey fish. You are not going to outrun kingfish. They are very fast. And their eyesight is super keen. That being said, if you're trolling at a slower speed, you are giving them the chance to cruise up and examine your bait and see if there's something sketchy about it. A faster trolling bait, what that does is that entices the impulse to feed. Trolling is meant to entice the impulse to feed on an actively feeding fish. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of how to rig up and get underway, let our line out, get the planer set, and get underway trolling for kingfish. You're gonna wanna understand this when it comes to getting the bite. Your rod is gonna be bent over in a parabolic form because of the pressure put on it from the diving planer. Once your rod lets up, you might not hear any line peeling out when your fish hits. All you'll see is this parabolic bend of your rod give in and it'll be less bent over like the planer has been tripped. You'll have to learn to recognize this. Once your planer is tripped, you're gonna reel it in. When you get up to the planer, you're gonna hand line in your leader. It's one of the funnest parts I find about planer trolling is the hands-on aspect of fighting that fish, hand lining him. Now, in order to prevent your leader from getting tangled up, you're going to want to loop out back. Do not pull your leader onto your boat and just let it bundle up into a huge bird's nest on your deck. When you get your fish up to the boat, if he's big enough for a gaff, you stick him and you get him on board. And that will bring your king mackerel fishing adventure full circle. Okay, so we've gone over how we're gonna troll for kingfish. That is planer trolling. We've gone over when and where to find them. Over structure, the deep reef, ledges. Make sure you're fishing where the food is. And we're gonna fish for them during the spring months and the fall months. 
Then we've gone over the baits. You're gonna wanna use drone spoons and strip bait lures. You're gonna tip that strip bait lure with some sort of strip bait. And we've gone over to gear, which is a planer of your choice, at least a 75 foot leader, and the minimum of a medium sized conventional trolling rip. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned what I consider to be the easiest and most productive way to catch kingfish. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.